Hello guys, uh, welcome to the channel and welcome to another film review. Tonight we're looking at quite an old sort of, um, I believe it's 1960s, um, sort of demented slasher film uh, from the UK. Um, and it's one of my favourites and it's been a while since I've seen it so um, I thought we would have a little look at it tonight and review it. And we're looking at um, a Michael Powell's film, um, Peeping Tom. Now this is um, it's getting a re-release next year, I believe on 4K. But this is just a standard sort of a Blu-ray release by Studio Canal. Um, it's a very sort of strange sort of story. But a very important horror film in my humble opinion. Um, just because when, when you watch it, you see elements of sort of like... Various sort of um, films, sort of, sort of slasher films, and it was kind of really advanced in its in its in its time, to be honest, and and it, and it caused the director quite a few problems. I believe when he made this, um, they sort of closed him down, and he wasn't allowed to sort of like make any more sort of films over here, and so he sort of went and lived abroad, I believe, in somewhere like Australia, to to venture some sort of career somewhere else. But um, it was because it because of the sort of subject matter, it it kind of um. It's almost like a, one of the very first sort of video nasties of its time. And the UK sort of shut it down almost pretty much. Um, it does resemble some sort of films like, if you think of films like sort of like Maniac. Um, and um, obviously not as gruesome or, or, or as severe as things like Maniac. But it's got the same sort of premise. And this is based on a guy called Mark. Uh, now he is a, so he works I believe for... Um, like this sort of shop, this sort of news agent shop that sort of produce seedy photographs on the side. And he works there in the shop and he also works taking photographs uh, of sort of like women upstairs in sort of like, sort of like sexy sort of um, underwear, if you like, and things like that. He that's, So that's his sort of jobs. And his sort of pastime is is making films and sort of like doing photographs. And he's a peeping Tom. Um, and he, he, this is what the film is about. It's about intrusion of people's privacy and um, murder and things like that. Like the film sort of starts off with him. We see like a street of London at night and he's got his camera with him. And he approaches this prostitute and he's filming her. And we sort of see very cleverly filmed, almost like a, on an old sort of cine camera frame with, with like a... Um, so you, you see it from that view. Anyway, so they go. She sort of like speaks to him, says it's going to cost you two pounds, <laughs> two pounds. But anyway, so he follows her to her room, and they go up to wherever she lives. And once they're in the room, she starts to sort of undress and sort of you know, sort of prepare for whatever whatever she thinks is going to happen. Um, and she's sort of sitting on the bed, and then he sort of shines a light in her face, sort of thing. And then he goes ahead and kills her. Um, this is all the killing's done off screen at this at this part. And um, he kills her, and we see it through the camera sort of view. Um, so it's almost like when he's committing these sort of atrocities, it's all done not on his view. It's done on like a a, a sort of um, a third person sort of view, if you like. So it sort of eliminates him from being sort of like the killer if you like i think that's what it's trying to play on and um, because he seems quite a shy humble person um and he seems very uh you know wouldn't say boo to a ghost but when he's got this camera in his hand but he, he 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 turns into something else sort of thing almost and then he goes back the next day and he starts filming footage of the police arriving and sort of taking the body away and all the public watching and all this sort of thing goes on um and then we we see a house where he i think he owns it he says he's the landlord of the house and he goes back there and one of the families the young girl downstairs is having a party it's her 21st birthday and everyone at the party see him looking in the window you know so he's also sort of like peeping tom again in the window and so um 
they all sort of like laugh at him anyway. So he goes into his house and the girl from the party comes out and sort of introduces herself to him. And she seems quite nice and quite friendly and wants to know him. And she invites him to the party, but he says, no, he's got work to do. So she, he goes up to his flat and it, we, we see him sort of then sort of viewing footage of the police part of this, of his crime that he's committed. And then there's a knock on his door and it's the girl from downstairs and she's brought him up a slice of cake. <laughs> I wish someone would bring me a slice of cake. It's my favourite thing. Um, but, um, yeah, so he... Uh, so he invites her in for a glass of milk and she sort of sits down and she, she spots like this sort of um, curtain, black curtain. He goes, so is that another room? He goes, yeah, and it's his dark room. And so she says, oh, for my birthday, I'd like to see some of your films because he, he tells her that he wants to be a director one day. Anyway, so he takes her into that room and sort of plonks her down on the chair in front of her to watch this cine camera sort of footage of himself when he was a little boy. And it shows him footage again. Um, he's sort of spying on a couple kissing. Um, his father's filmed it. And it's all these sort of weird little things. And we see a footage of his father tormenting him with sort of like placing a lizard on his bed and stuff like this. And him, him crying as a little boy and all this sort of thing. And the girl's getting quite disturbed by it all because she just doesn't understand what it's supposed to be sort of thing. And she's asking him all these questions, and he's trying to film her. He's trying to film her on the camera for her reaction to see what she reacts to this film. And so, um, and she's getting quite stressed about it and doesn't want him to film. And he sort of like uh, explains things. And then this footage of him saying goodbye to his mother who's died and all this sort of thing. And it's quite a bizarre sort of footage. Anyway, it sort of freaks the girl out. Anyway, so this sort of, that's sort of the, the main sort of synopsis bit I'm going to tell you because the story veers off and I don't want to sort of spoil it for you. But pretty much he's like a killer that goes around with this camera and he uses the camera as an escape from actually, um, if, if he's just killing them straight, you know, killing them, then he knows he's killed them. But I think well, if he's doing it via a camera, he feels like it's almost, it's not him, that kind of thing. And it's a very clever film. And it's a quite a, a um, I suppose for its time, it, it, it was like a, a video sort of nasty. And, you know, this sort of thing wasn't allowed because it, it sort of showed people intruding on other people's privacy and, and, and sort of thing. And, um, like, there's one part in the film when he's doing his photographs of these girls upstairs, and there's a girl with a disfigurement in the face, and he's really interested in that. And he, he sort of, like, really sort of zooms in on this girl to sort of, like, photograph her and stuff. It's it's really kind of strange. And he um and he's sort of obsessed, and this camera turns him into someone sort of else, really. And he's all, you know, and he's like, um... So... He, he goes off on his, his sort of, you know, his killing sort of spree, killing people, women, um, but through a camera lens and, and sort of like, and then he, he watches the films back. It, it's, it's that sort of film. So it's kind of really, really cool. So what do I think of Peeping Tom? It's a great film. Like I said, it's one of my favourite sort of early slasher films um, because it was like, way ahead of its time it's got a certificate x look <laughs> it was sort of ahead of its time if you like you know um and it was really unacceptable by the british sort of um standards and, and they didn't want it to be sort of shown i think it was pretty much not allowed to be shown in in britain um when it was actually made <clears throat> and like i said it, it pretty much ended the career of this director I believe he made another quite famous film before it called The Red Shoes. Um, but he, he was he was like an upcoming director. But he made this film and it is what pretty much ended his career. Um, the pluses of this, it, it's a really nice transfer. The colours are really vibrant. It's got that real 60s sort of um, feel about it. Um, it's got a bit of a sleazy feel to it, which is quite cool. But you need that for this film. If it's about a peeping Tom, then yes, it, it needs that sort of sleazy feel. Um, he, it's convincing. He's quite a convincing guy because he's very uncomfortable to watch. 
because it's long sort of pauses and silences and stuff when people are talking to him as he's searching for his words. And he looks quite a normal, you know, not unattractive sort of guy. And it's just like, he, 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 if you passed him in the street back in that day, you probably thought, you know, he's, he, you know, he's probably a, a young lad with girlfriends and stuff like that. But he's not. He's this deranged guy that's, um, I think his father sort of almost pushed him into this sort of thing. I think he's been bullied as a childhood. So it does sort of touch on childhood problems as well when he was a child. Um, so it, it's got like a, a normal sort of serial killer. They all have sort of problem childhoods. And it sort of touches on that. So it's a really cool sort of story. Um, yeah, it's very convincing cast. Uh, negatives, for a lot of people, it can be... Um, not necessarily a slow burn, but lack sort of um visual killings. There, there is you do see some of the killings in there, but it's not nothing major. But we're talking the British film made by Ealing in the sixties. You know, it's an Ealing film. You know, <laughs> so it's it's not like something that's going to be like majorly um explicit, but for subject matter, it's very explicit for its time. I'm going to score the film an amazing watch and give it a 9 out of 10. I think it's a forgotten classic. I think it's a classic that's underrated and not really appreciated for what it brings to the table. Because when you watch it, I can see all kinds of like horror films um, that have taken influence from this. Um, especially films like um, Maniac and stuff like even Even the newer films like Sinister, where, they, where the killers filmed is killings on on camera on this old cine film so again there must be some sort of influence in there and obviously um a, a quiet man who's a killer you know it, it it's it's kind of like a it's a lot of films were are made like that so i think it's influenced quite a few films and i think it's an underrated film um this edition begins with a uh a film introduction by Martin Scorsese. He actually introduces the film because he says he absolutely adores the film. It's it's a classic, and for for a horror film, I think it's he's spot on. It's a great great film. If you haven't seen it, you really need to see Peeping Tom. But don't go in with high expectations, please, because if you do, you'll be disappointed. Um, because it does play out like a nineteen sixties film. Um, so there's a lot of character building, a lot of talking, a lot of dialogue, and there's a lot of sort of like, um, you know, but if if you go in there thinking, wow, this is quite shocking for its time, you know, and, and I, I could imagine, like, back in the time when this came out, this would have shocked the British audience, um, and that's why I think there was a few issues with it um, when, when it actually came out. It, it, like I said, it killed off the director's career. You know, nobody would touch him after this film. And that's a shame, because this was great. Peeping Tom, 9 out of 10. Any of you guys seen it? If you have, let me know down below what you thought of it. I mean, it when people talk about slashers and early slashers, this tends to get forgotten. Um, that They all talk about um, things like the first slasher films being like uh, Black Christmas and... and um, Bay of Blood and things like that, but th th what about Peeping Tom? You know, everyone seems to forget about this one. This is a British one, and British slasher films are extremely rare, believe me. There's not that many, um, but but this is a, a fantastic one. It's got a very eerie atmosphere. It's a very sort of uncomfortable sort of atmosphere and watch, because it's not, you know, it's just like thinking... What if people actually like this, like, out there? Because, like, I work on the railway, and I see loads of people taking photos. I see some people spending all day at the station with their cameras and stuff like this. And I'm just thinking, you know, are you just taking pictures of of, of trains? You know what I mean? You just don't know, do you? And it's 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 kind of, like, quite eerie like that. And, and, and it can be quite scary because it is an invasion of people's um, privacy and stuff like that. Like like I said, when the, the little bit of synopsis I give you, the girl that's watching the cine films that he's showing her, he's filming her watching it. 
and it's like you know and he was he was caught looking at them through their window and stuff like this really really bizarre great film though guys till my next video please check out another horror channels for me check out horror hands horror geek man v film rs designs pizza well i'm the ice lord cat watches horror movies grumpy andrew's haunted house and a massive shout out to my lad until next time look after yourselves look after one another and i really hope i see you all soon